Hi, I'm Vicki Hoth. Welcome to HQ Live. We're here in the Handy Quilter studio today and I have a friend that works for Handy Quilter and she got married and so we thought let's make her a quilt. So the studio educators, all the four of us, got together, we made this quilt and as I was quilting on it I thought there's some really good techniques here that you need to know that I could teach you. So today it's all about Pro Stitcher. So we're going to go through how to use the mark tool and creating a folder for all the designs that I'm putting on this quilt. So let's just get started and we'll just work our way through. So the first thing I want to do is actually choose my designs, which I have chosen, and I want to put them all in a folder because I tend to forget where I found those designs because I have a design in this folder and in this folder and in three different places because I have three designs and maybe one on a jump drive as well and so I want to put them together in a folder so that when I go home for the day I come back I know where to find those designs so and I'm on the infinity today so if things look a little different uh, from maybe your machine it's okay everything works the same so we're in our uh, workspace and I want to choose all three designs so I'll choose one at a time and save it in a folder as I create a folder so I'm going to file and then design and I'm going to open I'll just open this first one swirls in the key this is a design that Marie Eldridge one of our educators just freehand made and we thought it would be really cute on this quilt so that's what I'm going to use on the border of this quilt but I want to save it in its folder so let's go create a folder for the quilt and with these three designs inside of it so I'm going to go to file and then design and open and I want to put this on the C drive because I have a, a USB stick on in my computer or on the Pro Stitcher. I don't want to save it there I want to save it on my C drive so I'm going to go ahead and select the C drive and I'll just do it uh, in the outside, I'm not going to go inside any folder there, so I'll press the plus button and I'm going to create Heidi, H-E-I-D-I, -I. that's who I'm making this quilt for. Create, and you can see at the bottom under the Windows folder that there's Heidi. So from there, every design now that I have, I'm going to save in there. So I'm going to go ahead and go cancel and now I want to press the save button because I have one design on the screen. I want to save it in that folder. So I'm going to press save and it's, I want to just save the design. I don't want to save the workspace. So the selected design, which it's selected, and I'm going to choose Heidi's folder, the C drive, and go up and find Heidi. It's in alphabetical order. Select that and it swirls in the keys is the name of it and save it. Okay, now I want to bring in the next folder, or the next design, but I want to clear all, clear that off, bring in my next design. It's going to be triple feather, there. And this is a design in the, in the library, but I want to put it in my own little folder. So I'm going to go ahead, press the save again, selected, and I'm in the C drive, but I need to find that folder, there's Heidi, open that up, triple feather, I'm going to save that in there. My third design, it's not on my, let's see if we can go down and find it, there it is, curly edge to edge. And I forgot to close out that other design, so I'm going to go ahead and select that other design and close it. Now select the curly edge to edge and I actually have my rubber band on. I'm going to turn that off so it just has the... Now we're going to go back to file and I want to save this design in that folder. So this is save, selected, and find the Heidi folder in C, Heidi, and my last one is saved. Now if, I, now, if I were to go choose, need to choose those designs, I'll press my design, open, and the C drive, I have to make sure it's the C drive, Heidi, and I have my three designs in there. Now I know I will not lose them. I can find them, and it's more efficient that way, okay? All right, we've got all our designs saved into a folder when we need them. 
But now what I want to do is I've got a frame around this block, a nice sashing around it, and what I want to do is create a straight line. I want to frame it with stitching. So, and I want to use the mark tool. So to use the mark tool, you're going to Pro Stitcher and you're going to record. And you don't want anything else on your screen. If there is, just press the clear button and everything will go away because I'm going to record my own stitching here. And I'm going to, I've got the, actually I've got the echo foot, the 3 8 inch echo foot on and that's going to give me my border around here, give me my spacing. So I'm going to move up to this top and it's kind of hard to see because it's a little farther away from me. So I like to take a right angle ruler and just place it there right in the corner. And then I can press my ruler up against or my hopping foot up against it and I know that I'm getting accurate spacing for that. So I'm going to place that right there and I'm going to press the mark button. I'm going to come down to this corner, and I can see this one, so I don't need that ruler. I'm going to press the mark again, and you'll see on the screen that I have, or maybe I didn't get that pressed, it didn't show it, so we better go back and press that. There it is. You can see my first line. I'm going to just go straight across and press the mark again. Now you can see I've got my second. Just framing this, I'm going to use my ruler again up here because I can't see for sure where I'm at. Move, move that right up there and press the mark. And then right now if you look at that, I don't have it closed. This is record. It's not in creating an area. An area would have closed that, which but I need to come back over to the start point and I'm going to just line up my crosshair right on the start point, the bullet there, and press mark again. Now you can see I've created my frame around my purple, or my stitching line around my purple frame. So I'm going to go ahead and press run, proceed. I know I've got all my settings correct and let it go up to that corner, take its tie off stitch. Now, I like to, I'm using a uh, trilobal polyester, quite a slippery thread like embroidery thread, and I like to add more tie-offs. So I've added, I have six tie-offs for this, so it's going to be really secure. So you'll see it tie off six different, six stitches. And I may want to use my hands to make sure that everything works right as we're going down. Just kind of manipulating. Flip that thread so it's not in the way. Now it'll stop six little micro stitches short of the end and do its micro stitches and it's finished. And I didn't have to use a ruler. Some people have struggled, you know, struggled using a ruler because of arthritis or they just don't like using rulers. So this was a great way to get a straight line. The, between two points you get a straight line, right? And so that's what I did. And now I've got that finished and I want to do another one on the inside. So we'll just disable our motors. Bring up the bobbin thread and clip our threads. Okay, now I want to do the same thing around the inside. So I need to clear or go back to my Pro Stitcher record and clear the one that I've just stitched out and create a new one. So with that I can do the same thing if I need to get that position correctly. I actually like to just eyeball this one. I want to make sure that it's right in that corner and I'm going to press 
mark. Then I'm going to come down. Now I'm on the infinity and I could actually use, see I could use that ruler there if I needed to. I could use the button, the third button, and it will mark that position for me. Okay, again, if, the, if you struggle with that, use your, use your ruler to get that right where it should go and mark. I've got three marks. And, okay, we've got our third mark. And then I still have to come back over and connect them. So find that crosshair, put the crosshair on the bullet, and then press mark for the fourth. And now you can see that I have created another square. And you can also see that it's not really truly square because the fabric has shifted a little bit, but it's going to give it that accurate stitching. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, press my run, proceed, moves to the position. I didn't have to move it there. And I actually sometimes move it back over a little close, but it will move itself back. my threads. We're coming to the end. It'll take that last six tie off. Go right into the corner. And it locks its motor. So I can't move it unless I go up to the top right of the screen and press the motor uh, lock and it will unlock it. Now I know some people uh, have actually used, go into Pro Stitcher and disengage the, the gears thinking that's the way you do it. Just hit your, uh, the key or the motors lock and it unlocks it and then I can move it. Needle down, needle up, we'll clip those threads and now I've created that wonderful, beautiful frame and I'll bring, I will uh, put the feather design right in here. You don't really see it much, but it'll just create a beautiful design in there. You can see it on the back too. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I have all of these sashings or these lines going this way. I want to use my channel lock, my horizontal channel lock to get accurate straight lines across there. Because when I piece this, I made sure that those lines were going as straight as they could be. I want my, or my stitching lines to be straight as well. I have been using the echo foot for spacing between those lines. So I've already stitched in the ditch on both sides of this, and now I'm just going to do a horizontal stitching back and forth. All right, so I'm going to start on the left, and if I need to use my ruler to make sure that I'm right where it needs to be and move my hopping foot over to that edge, right there. And then doing that, I'm going to go ahead and use my channel lock, my horizontal channel lock, lock it in place, grab my thread, we'll do a needle down. Needle up, it's locked in place. So now I can use my handles, just press the start button and it will stitch across. Do a little lock there and stitch. Go right to the edge. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can put, use the vertical now and just stitch down vertical and use your hopping foot for spacing. Okay, and then press the horizontal again and stitch back. And I know you probably can't even see the stitching. It really is there. It really is stitching. So now we want to go vertical again, down right in the seam and use my foot for spacing. 
and then go back to the vertical or the horizontal all the way across and go back to the vertical down in the ditch using the echo foot horizontal back stop change to the vertical and that's the way I will do this until I get to the edge and I went a little bit farther but I just stitched back horizontal stop down using my echo foot for spacing stop vertical I bet you've got this figured out by now we have just a couple more rows and we're done with that vertical down and then I'm going to just use my foot and divide that between the two because there's a little bit more but you're never going to see that there's a little more spacing and I'm done do a little back tack there and disable my motors and then I can clip my threads. So I've got a lot of those to do, and I'm sure you don't want to sit and watch me do all of those. So we're going to move on now, advance the quilt, and we're going to do the white. Okay, let's move to the white fabric and create a design to place in there. So I still have my echo foot on. This is a 3 8 inch echo foot, and I want to create a channel around this that's unquilted, so it will frame the quilting that I have. I've chosen a design from uh, Christy Dillon, My Creative Stitches, and it's a design that I purchased, so you can go out there and find the same design. It's really a fun one. It has no over stitching, so it's, it's fun to use, and it stitches pretty fast. And it's called Curly Edge to Edge. So I'm going to now create an area around this, leaving 3 8 of an inch, off around all of the edge. So I'm going to start down here using my echo foot as a guide going to area. Since I'm using the infinity I can use my third button as my uh, multi-point. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to place my hopping foot and mark my first spot. You can see on the screen it came up. Now and I like to use the ruler here to make sure that I've got that down far enough, okay, as I come around I'm going to make sure my line goes down and across the back. I want to make sure I get a good three or three eighths inch going up. Use my ruler again to make sure that I'm in that correct position for my foot. Come over here, the same thing that same, see I'll position the ruler first and then move my foot to it, down, make sure I have the line below that, line down there so that I get the accuracy using my ruler again, place it there, move it up into the corner and now from here I can almost see it See it close enough, you can see that design that I'm creating on the screen of the area. One more. Okay, let's refresh that so we can see everything. Well, obviously my design is not in the right position, but I'm going to move it there. But I want to turn, go to my view and turn on the rubber band. That rubber band creates a rubber band around the design, the outermost parts of the design. And I'm just going to move my design over, and you can do that with your finger. Just, it's a drag. And once I let go of it, it just lets go of it. It's right there. And I think I like that. I, I mean, look, I could move that any place I want, but I really like where I've got it down far enough that's going to fill everything in. And Oops, it shifted just a little, but I can move that back up. There, right. That's good. 
Now I want to crop away everything on the outside. So I'm going to modify, crop, and when I do a crop, I want to crop outside. So crop outside, and you can see the rubber band is still there, and if I decided I wanted to move the design around and didn't like my positioning, I could actually just move that any place. Now so you can see there, just moving that around. I'm going to move that back. Just kind of position that the way I like it. And now I want to close the edges. So it's going to create a stitching line where it closes those edges. I might shift this a little bit differently. Just, ah, we'll leave it like it is. Okay, now I'm going to edges and press the edges and now it's just a running stitch where it closes those edges. So if I turn off my view, my area, you can see there's some running stitches and those are just connecting where, the, where it cropped. Let's turn on the, back on the area. All right, it's time to quilt. So I am going to stitch, go to Pro Stitcher and we'll stitch this whole thing out and then I want to stitch a straight line around all of it for, uh, you know, a because the, it doesn't create a running stitch along all of the edges. I want to create a running stitch or a uh, channel around that and so I'm going to use my area to do that. So I know where my start point is, is right up there. I can go ahead, press run, and we'll watch it stitch out. Doing my tie offs. Go ahead and clip. Okay, we're about finished with this. It's just going to finish that and stitch it. And there it is, it's finished. Now it didn't fill in all of the borders, all the way around of the border. So I want to use my um, trace design, my which, uh, trace area, and let that stitch. So this design is a repeatable design and I repeated across, a, you know, a few repeats across, about three or four down. And the way this stitched is it stitched across the top and then there was a jump that it came over and started over here and stitched the center and then it finished with the bottom. So there's actually three rows in here. Doesn't matter how many rows as long as, it's got some threads going on there, as long as we uh, repeat it and make it fit the, in, within the area. So now I'm going back to my Pro Stitcher and I want to do quilt and the, you see the trace area button. I'm going to press the trace area and it's going to act, because I have my stitch button uh, selected, I, it will stitch the area. So wherever I started my area, it's going to go to that point and that's where I started it and now it will stitch a uh, stitching all the way around to frame this. I'm going to go ahead, press, whoops, I guessed wrong. You probably were thinking that she didn't know what she was talking about. That's where I started. Okay, see that was a whole three rows ago. Go ahead, we're going to do tie-offs. We did a pull up and do tie-offs. And now it's just going to stitch all the way around. And yes, it does have some stitching and it will be fine. stitches around that.
Coming up on the last portion, closing that in. It'll do the tie-offs. Okay, it's finished with that. Now what I would do is go back and do a stitch in the ditch around all of that and it gives me that channel so that it just frames my design. Okay, we've moved to another frame and I have some fabric on here that I'm doing an edge to edge quilt. A lot of questions on edge to edge quilting. So one of the most common questions asked is how do I reposition after I've lost my place? How, another question is how do I uh, find a new start point if my thread has broken and get back in position that way? And those are two different positionings. So if I position the fabric or the design to the fabric, that's one positioning. And we're gonna discuss that first. Before we do the positioning, I, we need to do something that's really important. And I did a big boo-boo today. I had this all set up and stitched out one row and didn't save. So the last two things you do before you start stitching, you baseline when you're doing the edge to edge and you save. So with this, I wanna save my workspace. That means I'm gonna save my area and I'm going to save the design the way it has been repeated and resized. So to save, we press the go to file and we press the save button. This time, I want to press workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the workspace and I'm going to type in maybe the name of this quilt. It already has a number and I could just use that, but I could also type in, and since this is a clo has clovers on it, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the bar and just type in clover and save. So then if something happens, the power goes out or somebody presses a button that they shouldn't press, then I have it saved and I can bring it back in and position. So I've got that taken care of now. Now I've stitched out my first row. I need to advance the quilt because I can't, this is about nine inches and I cannot stitch another nine inches. So I want to advance the quilt and I want to advance the pattern, the design, and have them go together. So they stay together and I don't lose my positioning. So we'll do it that way, and then we're gonna lose our positioning and we'll show you how to find your positioning. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and drop my needle down into a point. And all I really needed to do is just drop it any place, but I kinda like to always drop it into a point. That's a reference point for positioning if I need to do a little adjusting. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've chosen this point here, drop my needle in, and another thing that you wanna put your glide foot on when you're doing edge to edge. This glide foot just glides over the top of your fabric. If there's any type of dimensional uh, piecing in it, it just glides over the top and it makes it really good. So I'm gonna go ahead, drop my needle down. Okay, it's down in position. So what I did just then is the machine grabbed a hold of the fabric with the needle, okay? Now what I need to do is grab a hold of the design with the crosshair. And you can see on the design, or on the screen, that the crosshair is at that very same point because they are positioned together now. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the drag button on the left uh, toolbar, and now that has latched on, the crosshair has latched onto that design. So if I start advancing this, you will see the design scroll up the page on the screen. So I'm gonna release my side clamps. Really important as you're doing this, you always have your side clamps on. When you're advancing, then you take your side clamps on, off, and you advance. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance, make sure everything is uh, correct there, and move. Now watch, you'll see the design go up the screen. So I'm just gonna advance that far enough that I know I can get another row in. That's close enough. And I like to put my side clamps on next. Gonna put my ratchets down. Gonna go ahead and do the other side. Make sure that my bungee cords are tight. The tension is right here where I'm gonna be stitching. Okay, I've got all that set. 
The other, last thing I want to do is I want to lift this, just this side of the pole, and I'm going to adjust my batting, making sure that there's no wrinkles in my batting, okay? These are important things to do so that you have a successful quilt nice in the end. Okay, so everything's in position. I'm going to look down here, and it was kind of tugging, so I had a little bit of a ripple there. I want to set that back in position so that it's smooth around there. Then I want to look at my screen, and I want to make sure that I haven't got it off to the side, because you can see on my screen as I move this, you can see I can move that right outside of the area. I want to make sure it stays within those two side walls. So I'm good with that. Now I want to drop the design, let go of it on the screen. So I'm going to press the drop button and then I can raise my needle. Okay, so now everything has been dropped in place. It's at advanced, so everything is correctly positioned. One thing I can do though, if I'm not sure that I'm in the correct position, I can press the follow button and what it does is it presses, it puts the crosshair in the center of the screen. The crosshair represents my needle, the, my position of my needle uh, in relationship to the design. Then I'm going to just zoom in on this. Use my zoom and it's holding my zoom, my crosshair, it's zooming right where I have uh, my crosshair. And so I can see, is that really in position? It is. How, does it, how is it in relationship to the next row? Is it going to overlap? Do you see, I look at the screen, put a, the crosshair at a point, it's not going to overlap on my design that has stitched out. This is a close point. Let's see, I've stitched, this is the next row. Yep, I like that. And you can go all the way across and see how things are. If something's wrong, you can go to your reposition and you can use your nudge and just kind of press in the, in the modify reposition and you can press these uh, nudge arrows and kind of nudge things up and down or to the left or right if you feel like you need to do that. But I didn't need to do that so I'm going to go ahead and press the home button or the refresh and it gives me my next view or the full view of the design. Okay so the last thing I want to do, a couple of last things, is I want to stitch down my sides. And when I stitch down my sides, I want to make sure that I am less than a quarter inch when I stitch. And when I, I add tension with my fingers right here, and it helps hold the machine so that it doesn't wave around for, with me. Stitch all the way down and there. I've got that side, and then I will go and do the other side. Use my scissors here and clip my threads. Clip your threads so that you don't have a problem with the machine getting caught with them as it's stitching along. And use a trash or some type of uh, good way to keep those threads managed so that they don't get caught up in your wheels. Okay, less than a quarter inch. All right, ready to do our last step and start quilting. Clip my threads again. Can't emphasize enough to keep things clean around there so that you don't have any mishaps. All right, so I, when, I, when it stopped quilting the first uh, row, it paused. And that's where the machine thinks I'm at, is over there. And if I press resume, it will want to go there. But because I went into uh, reposition, I've now canceled my whole row. So I, that's OK. I'm fine with that. I need to, though, advance that green bullet, which is at row one, to row two. So go to Pro Stitcher and New Start End. And on my Start column, I have an auto. I don't want to use auto. I have a segment. At this point it's at zero and I have an arrow up and an arrow down with a slider in between. I don't want to use any of those. I want to jump. 
So I go down where it says jump. There's an up jump and a down jump. I want to jump it down. So I press the down arrow, and if you watch, it will jump it to the next row. That is the row that I want to stitch. Now I can go ahead and press run, and it will start stitching that row. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I want to show you how to get back if your thread breaks. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we'll start stitching. It's going to move to the start point. It moved automatically there, you notice that. Pull my threads, hold on to those threads as it's doing those tie-offs. And move it, and you'll see the direction that it's going, just move it to the side of that. I always create my area a little larger than the whole quilt, and then everything gets cropped at the end. Cut off. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim that thread. After that gets out of my way. There, there we go. So as I'm stitching along and, and uh, walk out of the room, um, maybe my thread breaks because my needle needs to be replaced. I'm gonna actually go ahead and cut that thread. And now it's gonna, with the Avante, it's gonna keep stitching. And it could, if I left the room and didn't come back, it could have stitched the whole row. So it's stitched quite a bit here and I need to pause. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the pause and it stops. So my thread <laughs> broke right back here and I need to go back and get all of this stitched. First thing I better do is fix that thread issue. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure when you fix that thread issue that it's threaded properly because if it's stitching for a while the threads tend to get kind of tangled up. So make sure it goes up into your, um, your uh, take up lever and also that it's tensioned properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this. Sometimes it's a little harder to thread when you've got that glide foot on, but there we go. Now, I need to go back there. That's where I wanna to resume to. So I'm going to back to Pro Stitcher, press the Pro Stitcher button, and New Start End. I'm gonna release my motors by touching the button at the top that says Motors. And now I can move the machine freely. All right, so I know my bobbin thread is still attached. So I need to just bring that up. I'm gonna go ahead and do a needle down, needle up. And then I can clip that right where it was there. When I restart, I like to go back to a point. And I'm gonna leave that stitching because as it stitches, it's gonna stitch over the top of it and they're going to lock together with the friction of the threads. All right, so then what I wanna do is I wanna put my needle back at that point or close to it. I could put it over here and then just move it forward. So maybe that's what I'll do is just put it there. And now I'm gonna use in the new start end the auto button and it's gonna automatically move my green bullet to that right there where I want it to be, where the needle is, which represents the crosshair. And so I'm gonna go ahead and auto, and it popped it right over there. So you can see that, we'll get rid of that check needle. And you can see where that is. Let's do a follow and zoom in on this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's not where I want it to be. So with that, I'm gonna use my arrow and I'm gonna go forward the down arrow and go forward right to the point. That's where I wanna be. So then it will move to that point. And if I want to pull up, then press the tie off uh, on resume and the pull up on resume. Or if you just want it to go forward, it's up to you. I'm gonna do a manual pull up right there in that point. Just pull that up. Whoops, gotta find that bobbin thread. There it is. Must have cut that a little short. We'll pull that up. And we know it's gonna go in this direction around. So I'm gonna hold my threads 
here. Now I'm going to press resume. Let's, let's hold them there so the camera can see better. Okay, resume. And there it goes. And it took off and stitched over. If you don't like what you're seeing there, you could just unpick those or top bury them. Let's get rid of that. And there we go. So we've used the auto. We've used the arrows to find our, our uh, start point. And we use the jump to actually jump it to the next row. So I needed to stop for the day and I just, I couldn't finish this row. Some, something happened that I needed to stop immediately. So I stopped and I'm gonna press the stop button and I'm gonna leave for the day. And so what I need to do tomorrow or whenever I come back, I've got to do a reposition because I'm gonna shut the whole program down. So first of all, I think I'm going to actually just clip my threads because I'm gonna come back and get to start in that position tomorrow. So I'll go ahead and clip those threads and we're gonna shut down. Oh, is this scary? But guess what, you remember? We saved our workspace. It's not position, it won't be positioned, but we saved it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back over to file and just clear everything out and everything's gone. Now if you say, you know what, emergency averted, I don't have to do it, you can just undo and it's all back in place. I'm going to turn off my follow there and we're just gonna have to come back and reset everything up, but I saved everything. I've got to find my positioning and I have to find my start point. It's gonna be easy, don't panic, don't panic. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my design and that's not where I want to be. I want to be in my workspace. I want to open up my workspace. So I've got file, I want a workspace. And the last thing I put in there was Clover. So there it is. I'm going to open that back up. So that brings in everything. It brings in that area exactly. It brings in the design. But is it positioned? If I go over to the point that I stopped at, it is not positioned. So i got to figure out what to do. Do I want to keep that area on the screen? And you can see the area is actually a dashed line. That means that the area has changed positioning. So we need to get some things figured out here. So I'm go I know a point on this row right here that will give me my correct positioning. I know that if I move my machine, my needle, to the start point of this row, that start point is on my screen as well. So if I move over, and this, this um, setup that I have, this layout, this, every row is the same. So it doesn't matter which row I choose. And since my green bullet is at the top because it's started over, I can just move my machine over to the start point. And then I'm going to go to modify, reposition, and reposition is if there's a button over here on the right that says start point, there's an end point, a center, a drag. I want to use the start point. When I use that start point, it's based, it will put the design uh, up to where my crosshair is. So if I put my crosshair to the start point and I press the start point, it will move the design there. It will put that green bullet, my start point, to my crosshair. So let's, let's test it. I've got my needle right there, which represents my crosshair. I'm going to press, you can see how far off that is. I'm going to press start point, and it moved it down. Now, <coughs> the, the area didn't move, but it doesn't matter right now. I'm not worried about the area. It didn't move. I'm okay. It's the design I'm really concerned about. So I've positioned it. Now I've got to figure out how to start over here. So I've got that taken care of. I'm going to move over to where my thread, where I cut my thread. And I think I'll go back up to this point right here with my needle. Go, <coughs> excuse me, go to Pro Stitcher, New Start End, and press Auto. It will now automatically move my green bullet over to that same point of the, where the crosshair is. And now 
I'm ready to start stitching. So if I want to un or unpick that little area there, I can and just start there or I could just let it stitch over the top of that. Maybe clean up those threads a little bit and stitch over the top. So let's go ahead and see if what we did is going to work. We're right there. But you know what? Do you, are you seeing something happen? As I move, that green bullet keeps following me. So I, there's one thing I didn't do, and I need to go back and get it to the point. Let it follow me to the point there. There, it's followed to the point, and now I need to turn the auto off and lock it in place. Now, did you see what just happened? Oh, the, the stop point moved up there too. If you look over in the sidebar, it says that they're at the same spot. Oh, well, I don't want that. I want the stop point to be at the very end of my designs. So all I have to do is take the little bar on my end point, end point, end point, all the way down. Do you see how it moved? All the way down. So that's a little bug right now and we're trying to get that fixed. But this is the workaround. If it moves over to your start point, just come over here to your new start end, move that end point, slide it all the way down to the end, and you're good to go. That's not a problem at all. So you can see right here where it didn't stitch exactly right. So I can go ahead and unpick that and bury those threads and I'll be good. So we'll let this stitch out and this is all I'm going to stitch because I'm going to show you how to crop next. Okay, we finished our next row and I don't have enough room to stitch another row. I don't want to stitch another row, but I want to stitch a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and clip my threads and bring up my scissors here and clip that off. And it looks pretty nice. Everything's spacing, everything's good. But I, I need to just stitch a little bit of that row, so I've got a crop. So something that just hit me last week, it was just like, oh, that was such a good idea. I hope you think it's a good idea because it's a really easy way to crop. I have an area. I already have an area. When you crop an area, you have to have an area. I've always just cleared the area of the whole quilt and created an area at the bottom to crop away. But because now we can move our area, we can resize our area, I can take that same area that I have and move it down to the bottom. So I know if I move my machine down, I can stitch probably about that much. So where my crosshair is, that represents my needle, that's the positioning. If I select my area and maybe resize it out a little wider to make sure it gets all of the everything in it and move it down, then I can crop that area off or that, that design and just stitch maybe a, you know, a third of it. So I'm going to go ahead to area, the area tab, and I'm going to have to press, see everything's grayed out. So I need to press my stop, and now I have, I, ha I can use those buttons. I want to select the area. When I select that area, it is going to turn green. That means I can edit it, I can adjust it. So when I press the select, and you can see it unselected the design, but it selected the area and it's green. Now I want to add handles to it and actually resize it. So I'm going to go to transform, and it, it gave me handles. And I, for a minute, I'm going to go to modify and resize. I want to turn my, yeah, my lock is turned off, so I'm good there. We'll go ahead and go back. I'm going to grab this out a little bit and this side and just make it bigger. It doesn't matter how big as long as, oh, I just moved my area. Did you see that? So I'm going to put my finger in the center and move that, and I'm going to move it down, down to where my crosshair is, the top of my crosshair. And I can go to my reposition and use my nudges to nudge that as well. So I'm going to put a larger nudge on there, point one, 
and nudge that down. You can see that nudge. Right where my crosshair is, is where I want it to go to. I like that. Maybe just up a little bit there. They match right up there. Now, I need to select the design. So I'm going to just touch the design, and it should, oh, I, I need to press the select button before I can touch it, and then touch the design, and it will select the design, okay? My area now is pink, so it's stable. I'm going to go to crop under modify, and press, I want to crop away the inside of what, what's inside of that area. I don't want to stitch that. So I'm going to press the inside button, and it cropped it, and I want to close the edges so it'll do a running stitch across the bottom and close all the edges off. Now if I were to move the area or else at least turn off the view of the area and move my crosshair up, you can see how that is going to stitch out and just closes the edges with stitches. And that's as easy it is, as it is to crop using the transform, selecting your area, resizing it if you need to. Wasn't that great? I hope you've enjoyed this. This has, there's so much information here. These things that we've talked about today are things that we get on the phone all the time of questions. How do I do this? I've lost my positioning. How do I do this? And so I hope this has helped you today and you are going to love, love using your Pro Stitcher Premium. Have a great day.